The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your manners! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country with a greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Wanted by the law for murder, Big Bill Connor traveled at a heartbreaking pace, his heavy boots leaving a distinctive trail behind him. Distinctive because of their size. Cutting through the timber, his one concern was to cover as much distance as possible in the shortest amount of time. That thaw hasn't hit the forest yet. Makes easier traveling. That mud's enough to slow anybody down. Somebody must be coming. Better have my gun handy. All loaded. I'll wait and see just who it is. Taking to back trails. Waiting with a gun in my hand, afraid to see anybody. Yeah, might just be some trapper. Whoever it is, I'm ready for him. Oh, the dog gone. <laughs> just a dog, a Melanie. Hmm. Running around out of harness. Ah, friendly fella, too, ain't you? Eh? Hey, let go of my arm. What are you trying to do there? That's funny. Thought for a minute he was going to start back through the timber. He keeps standing and looking over his shoulder at me. Now, look, Pooch, I don't know what you're up to. What's the idea of tugging at my Mackinac, huh? Let go of me, will you? Seems as if he's almost trying to say something. I wonder... You want me to, to go with you, is that it? There's something funny about this. I got a feeling I just ought to keep going and forget about this dog. All right, all right. Let go, will you? I'll go with you, Pooch. Lead the way. <laughs> he ain't taking any chances of me getting away from him. Runs a while and waits for me. Don't worry, Pooch. I'm coming. dog king finally halted, he stood beside a deep ravine, looking down into it. And as the man following the Malamute came up beside him, he too looked into the depths of the ravine. The man for whom the dog had sought help looked up from where he was trapped on the floor of a deep gash in the earth. The eyes of the two men locked. Tension weighted the atmosphere, and in those few seconds, Bill Connor's pulse drummed a warning loudly in his temples, for he was looking into the cool blue eyes of a scarlet-coated policeman. <laughs> Your dog brought me here, Preston. I sent him for help. How'd you come to fall into this ravine? I didn't even know it was here. Neither did I. Unless somebody throws a rope down to you, you'll stay there till you starve, Preston. I know that. It ain't likely anybody else will come by. You want me to throw that rope to you? Hunter, you know as well as I do that you're the man I'm after. What if I get you out of there? My job's to take you in. If I get you out of there, what about giving me a head start? We start together. The jail in Mercer City. That's how it is, huh? That's how it is. Well, you know what I'm going to do, don't you? I have a pretty good idea, yes. I'm going to do what any man in his right mind would do. You can stay in that hole till you rot. So long, Mountie. Connor retraced his steps. His pace was steady. There should have been a buoyant freedom in his stride, for he knew that it was impossible for the Mountie to pursue him. But instead, his body was slouched. A deep frown creased his forehead. The distance between him and the man who might be doomed to a death of starvation lengthened. It 
was several hours later. From where he was trapped, Sergeant Preston heard King barking. <laughs> Looking up, the moment he saw Bill Connors silhouetted against the darkening Yukon sky. Connors? Yeah. I came back, Preston. You can be miles away from here by now. What brought you back? I thought I could do it, but I can't. It'd be murder if I was to leave you here. Wait a minute, I'll throw you that rope. A short time later, Sergeant Preston sat beside a campfire with Bill Cotter, while the great dog king sat at his master's feet. The Mountie looked thoughtfully into the fire, then studied Bill Cotter's face. I don't understand it, Connor. Uh, I guess you don't. You think, like everybody else, that I'm a murderer. And yet you saved my life. If I take you in, you'll hang. That's what I should do. It's my duty. Yeah, I know. Maybe some people are just born unlucky. Nobody will believe me, not even Becky. Ten to one, you could have been out of the country before the law would ever have caught up with you. I couldn't do it, I tell you. I tried. I started out and I was going to leave you there. But then no skin off my nose. I didn't push you into that ravine. I didn't have anything to do with it, but... Uh, I don't know. I... Connor, I can't take you in. Though it may mean resigning from the force. If, if you'd only believe me... If you'd only believe me, you wouldn't have to resign. Sergeant, I'm not asking you to turn me loose or, or give me a break. All I want you to do is believe what's the truth. Well, what is the truth? I wasn't near Tim Howard's cabin the night he was murdered. Well, now, wait a minute, Bill. You know as well as I do, your footprints were plainly visible. I my... wasn't there, I tell you. Unless I was walking in my sleep. I know the footprints was there, and I know there ain't a man in the Yukon with feet the size of mine, but... I didn't kill him. I never killed anybody in my life. Mm. It's a truth, Sergeant. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Bill, even though I believe you and think you're telling the truth, I'm going to take you back to Mercer City to be jailed as a murderer. Perhaps we can trick the man who framed you into overplaying his hand. In Mercer City, two days later, Sergeant Preston was in the office of the jail where Bill Connor was held prisoner. An angry mob had gathered outside. The Mountie walked to the door of the small building. Men standing in ankle-deep mud were oblivious to everything but the policemen standing in the doorway. Where's Connor? Yeah. Hey, Mountie, we want Connor. The law will take care of Connor. The law is too slow to suit us. That's right, it's too slow. Yeah. I said the law will take care of him, and it will. Now break it up. Get moving. Hi, Sergeant. Well, Bill? Uh, sit down in the chair. I'll sit on the bunk. These boots pinch my feet. Guess they don't fit as well as my other ones. No? If that mob outside gets us away, I won't be troubled with feet much longer. You heard them, huh? Couldn't help hearing them. I thought they was going to storm this place. When you left town, Bill, you didn't bother doing any packing, did you? Nah. Didn't even go back to the hotel. Why? Then all of your things are still over there. So far as I know. Where's your room? On the ground floor. First one, off to the right. I see. What? Where are you going, Sergeant? Over to the hotel. I'll be back shortly. When Sergeant Preston left the jail... He locked the door behind him. As an added precaution, he left King in the office to stand guard. The great Malamute lay on the floor, his head raised between his paws. His ears were tipped forward, listening. The 
great Malamute stood tensely waiting and listening. He heard the fury of the men's voices, and as they rammed the door, it seemed that the small building rocked with the impact of their violence. Now's the time to get him while Preston's gone. That dog's got himself planted in front of the door to the cell block. You men gonna let a dog stop you? Yeah. Here, I'll attend to you. Let him alone, Atkins. He'll tear the arm off you. Preston thinks an awful lot of that dog. As the man advanced toward him, King watched each step intently. When Stacy Atkins reached out to grab his collar, King bared his long white fangs. Instinctively, the man fell back. Yeah, not me. I thought I could do it, but I'm not aiming to have him sink his teeth in my arm. Oh, well, you're stupid. What's wrong with you men? You've got guns, haven't you? Yeah, sure we have. Hold it. Here comes Preston. Now there'll be the devil to pay. So I'm just in time. You men are going to pay for this. And you're going to pay more than you realize. You there? Stay where you are. <laughs> Sergeant, uh, you know how it is. When a crowd is stirred up, there's nothing much anyone can do. I, I know that when a crowd is stirred up, it's usually because someone took particular pains to stir them up, and with good reason. In this case, it's a very good reason. All we want to do is see justice done. You should have had corners hung yesterday when you brought him in. Instead of that, you put the trial on. I guess he asked you to bring his boots over for him from the hotel. <laughs> From the size of them, they couldn't be anyone else's but him. You're right. right. These are his boots. But he didn't ask me to bring them over for him. Well, if you take such good care of all your prisoners, Sergeant, maybe being in jail wouldn't be so bad. These boots were worn by the murderer the night he killed Tim Howard. They weren't worn by Bill Connor. The ground around Tim Howard's cabin was a sea of mud. After slogging through the mud in these boots, the murderer left tracks in the cabin, right? That's right. We've seen him, and so did you. But the man who wore these boots was smaller than Bill Connor, much smaller. He climbed in the window of Connor's hotel room, took these boots, and put them on. But as he walked through the mud, the mud oozed up over the top of the boots, working its way inside. Inside the boots? Yes. I've sliced one of them open, and there's a footprint on the inner sole. A footprint that's very plainly marked, as you can see. Well, I'll be... Every one of you here are going to take off your shoes. I'm going to take your footprints and we'll match them against the print that's inside this boot. Well, 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 well. Sergeant, I tried to get through. Is, is he all right? What? Why, those are Bill's boots. He's all right, Miss Winters. Uh, uh, Sergeant, I I really should be at home. This cold might develop into... New... As long as pneumonia. you're here, you can be footprinted before you leave. Oh, Me? Why, as a town's banker, I... Why, I'm above suspicion. Uh, surely you don't think that take I... Take your shoes off. But... Maybe you need some help, Sergeant. Yeah, come on. Let go of me. Stop, I say. Get it up, Liz. Get it up, I say. This is an outrage. Oh. Don't reach for that gun, Stacy. Oh, yeah. Come on. There, there's the other one. There. Now I'll take this inner sole out. There. Stand on it, Stacy. No, I... You heard me. It won't be necessary. You win, Sergeant. I know when I'm licked. I did the killing. I had to cover for the money I'd taken from the bank. Most of what I'd taken was his. He was getting suspicious. It's my guess you caught your cold that night. I did. By the time I got his boots back, the hotel, my feet were soaked. I never should have taken the boots back. You'll hang for murder, Stacy. Here, Miss Winters, go back and release Bill. Oh, yes, I will. Now you men know what I meant when I told you you'd pay for what you were attempting to do. If you'd gone through with your plans, you'd have hung an innocent man. Every one of you would have been a murderer. I can't believe it. Atkins was with us all the time. It was your dog that guarded the cell block, Sergeant. He wouldn't let us through. Sergeant, is it true what Becky told me? It's true, Bill. If you'd been a murderer, you wouldn't have come back to the ravine for me. I suspected when you did return that you were not a killer. Oh, Bill. Oh, I'm so glad. It's all right now, honey. Don't cry. <laughs> yes, King. The case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios.